you look at a pangolin, they're so prehistoric looking. They do look like mini T-Rexes on their back feet with their front legs in the air, covered in these hard kind of scales. They only use the two back legs to walk around. They do use their front legs for balance and to help climb, but mainly they keep them nice and safe for digging to get down to the big ants. They also don't have any vocal cords, so they don't make any vocalizations whatsoever. Their tongue is this super, super long and it's stored in a pouch where the vocal cords would be. It's a common myth that they do have teeth and they can bite, but they actually don't. And a lot of people don't realize that they're actually mammals. They have such personalities and they have feelings and all of these emotions. Pangolins are the most trafficked animal in the world. They're used primarily for their scales and nothing more than keratin. They're declining dramatically. It's literally getting to the point where there's not going to be any left in a few years. The bond between pangolin mum and pup is incredible. She teaches this baby so many things that they need to take forward to become a successful adult pangolin. When she's feeding, she opens up these rocks for the pangolins and shows them where's the best spots to go and how to locate the ants. They stay super close to their mums. They actually ride on their backs. When they get taken away from their mums at this early age, this bond has been broken and we have to repair that bond. And it's really, really important that they're learning from us and learning to nurture their young as we are nurturing them. Nonna is one of our ground pangolins. She was actually handed in by a community after she was presented to the chief as a gift. He realized that this is a wrong thing to do, so then contacted us and Nature Conservation for us to come and collect her. She unfortunately was taken away from her mum way too soon, and we don't know what happened to her mum, but we then had to become the surrogate mum for her. It took a little while for her to get comfort out of us and because it was so foreign to her. Nonna is one of the hardest cases that we've worked with at the centre, that being because she is so young and she needed our help foraging more than anything. We open nests up for her, we pull rocks off and mounds to try and find her nest and then when she is feeling insecure we can also comfort her, you know, she rides on our shoulders like she'd be riding on her mum's back. We walk her for five hours and this lets her forage in the bush, finding her ants and getting to have a full tummy before going back to sleep. Nonna is a ridiculously picky eater like any toddler. Her favourite ants are sugar ants and she loves these but you don't find so many of these so we're running around the bush trying to find her her favourite ants because she has some days where she refuses to eat anything else. They will not feed in captivity and that's why we have to let them walk and forage for themselves. It can be really frustrating when they're being this picky because we want them to be eating about 20,000 ants per feed. We're wanting them to gain at least 100 to 200 grams per day for them to keep gaining and getting stronger and stronger so we can get them back to the wild quicker. To rehabilitate a pangolin is a costly process. All of them when they come in are compromised um, in some way, whether they've been kept in the trade for two weeks or two days, normally they need medical attention. Sometimes they have internal wounds, they've been kicked or you know thrown around, broken bones. When pangolins get very stressed, it does go to their lungs, so that causes pneumonia. So we always do treat the pangolins for that. Some of them are here for months on end, so it's very time consuming. But the biggest expense for the pangolins is the tags that we attach to them, but they are vital in the post-release monitoring and if we don't have them we cannot confirm if it's a successful release or if they're declining in the field. For the first few weeks we are taking weights every day to make sure they're either sustaining or that they're gaining weight and that they're finding enough to eat by themselves and they're also finding burrows to sleep in. It's really important that they do find this burrows and they're not sleeping in the open because they become very vulnerable. We're able to monitor them for six months to a year after the release. This is also really important. We've put all this hard work into this pangolin to go out and repopulate. For each pangolin, we estimate about 80,000 rand, which is about 4,000 pounds from start to finish to get them back into the wild. It's a huge amount of money, but it's vital that we spend this money to get them back out into the wild. We need to act now to try and save this population. Otherwise, there are gonna be no pangolins left in this world for tomorrow.